Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen Good morning and welcome. Welcome to all of you who are physically present with us and to all of you who are worshiping with us online. And a happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. We'll be hearing a little bit more about that later in the service. <laughs> Let's um, pause now, collect our minds and our hearts as we listen to the prelude and prepare for worship. <laughs> Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, 
by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting well spring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In the baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. <clears throat> Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture the crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life giving water of baptism the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sins and all that separates us from you. How our witness to your resurrection, strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where God drives the earth, bring refreshment. <coughs> Where despair prevails, grant hope. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen.
in Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. There's always 
a surprise in Mr. Frog's mouth, so I'd like to open that and see what's there. That's it. Oh, yeah, that, that's left over from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Jesus is, is saying goodbye to his disciples, and um, you'll hear more about that when we read the, read, read the gospel lesson, but for right now, I wonder if you could help me with something. See all those flowers up there? Those are for our mothers. So, I want you to help me give them out, all right? First, I'm going to ask you, so I'm not going to ask you to stand up, and um, if you are a great-great-grandmother, I won't ask you to stand up, raise your hand. Do we have any great-great-grandmothers? How about great-grandmothers? There we go. Would you? Would you? Pick one from it's way up from the bottom like that. All right. Yes. That's good. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. All right. Any grandmothers? Lots of grandmothers, oh my goodness. You're going to be busy here. Thank you. 
we're, now we're down to mothers, right? And then we have many other women who do a lot of mothering. <laughs> That's right. That would be that would be Lael. There you go. reading from Acts of the Apostles, Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, 
though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Before we continue with the song, in the spirit of Mother's Day, I would point out that the choir used to have a student of economics in its tenor section, whose name was, is Paul Organ. And Paul Organ's mother wrote the refrain of this song. If you have a hymnal nearby and look up Anne Prentz Organ in the index, you will find her responsible for three pieces of liturgical music. And I visited her website. She's composed a heck of a lot more than these two measures. Peter, who will harm you if you 
you are eager to do what is good, but even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death on the, in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Like any good mother, Jesus does his best to prepare his children, the disciples, for life without him. He gives them final instructions and a promise. I will not leave you orphaned. How many of you today especially are haunted by the words of your mother? How many of you can quote her words verbatim? Because they're so indelibly etched in your minds. How many of you keep her words as a sign of your love toward her? How many of you catch yourself thinking, Mom wouldn't like it if I did that or said this? And moms, how many of us would like to join Jesus and say to our kids today, if you love me, you'll do what I taught you to do. <laughs> well, moms, at this point, maybe we'll stop comparing ourselves to Jesus. There is a difference between Christ-like love and motherly love. There is a difference between maternal instinct or human love and divine love. There is a certain amount of maternal love or human love that just comes naturally. But in my experience, Christ-like love does not always come naturally. Pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer was <clears throat> martyred in Nazi Germany for his resistance to Hitler. He describes the difference between human love and Christ-like love this way. Human love is directed to the other person for the person's sake. Spiritual love loves the other person for Christ's sake. As a human being, I love for my own sake. There's something in it for me. But as a disciple of Christ, I love for Christ's sake. There may not be anything in it for me, but I love anyway. A psychiatrist describes the difference between motherly love and Christ-like love. In another way, some women seem to be capable of loving their children only as infants. They may be ideal mothers until their children reach the age of two. These mothers may be infinitely tender, joyously breastfeeding, cuddling and playing with their babies, consistently affectionate, totally dedicated to their nurture, and blissfully happy in their parenting. Then, almost overnight, the picture changes. As soon as a child begins to assert her own will to disobey, to whine, to refuse to play, to occasionally reject being cuddled, to attach herself to other people, to move out into the world a little bit on her own, to differentiate herself from her mother, if you will, the mother's love ceases. She loses interest in the child and begins to perceive her as kind of a nuisance. At the same time, she'll often feel an almost overpowering need to be pregnant again, to have another infant, another pet, according to this psychiatrist. Usually, she will succeed, and the cycle is repeated. If not, she may be seen avidly seeking to babysit for the infant children of the neighbors while she almost totally ignores the needs of her own older children for attention. 
For her children, the terrible twos are not only the end of their infancy, they are also the end of the experience of being loved by their mother. It makes me think in some ways of that instinct of falling in love. The Bible calls this kind of instinctual love eros, E-R-O-S, not A-R-R-O-W-S. <laughs> Which is where we get the word erotic. Instinctual love is relatively effortless. It encourages the survival of the species, but it isn't necessarily directed toward the improvement of the species. It is not directed toward spiritual growth. In fact, in a marriage, when the romance fades, that's when we learn what genuine love is really all about. We should ask Jane and Warren Hughes about that. I understand they'll be celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. And we should ask Linnell Brummel about mothering with Christ-like love. Her daughter, Maria, and, her, and Maria's spouse, Mary, have adopted two beautiful boys in addition to having a daughter biologically. These boys' biological parents' rights were permanently terminated. Their joining the family has been a mutual blessing. Brothers were able to stay together. Mary and Maria persevered in the face of so much resistance to provide these boys a loving and supportive family. Yesterday, William, the youngest, scored the first goal of the season for his soccer team. Maria and Mary are extending themselves well beyond maternal instinct. Their promise echoes the promise of Jesus. We will not leave you orphaned. A mom named Lois describes it another way. One very hectic day, she and her spouse were busy going in a hundred directions. Their four-year-old son, Justin Carl, had to be reprimanded for getting into mischief. His dad finally told him to stand in the corner. <clears throat> well, Justin Carl was very quiet, but he wasn't too happy about it. Finally, after a few minutes, four-year-old Justin said, I'm going to run away from home. And Lois says, my first reaction was surprise, and his words angered me. You are? She blurred. But as she turned to look at him, he looked like an angel. So small, so innocent, with his eyes so sad. As her heart felt his pain, she remembered a moment in her own childhood when she spoke those very same words. I'm going to run away from home and how unloved and how lonely she felt. She remembered that little girl, her, was saying so much more than just her words. She was crying from within. Don't ignore me. Please see me. Aren't I important too? Please help me feel wanted, loved, needed. So Lois whispered to her son, okay Justin, you can run away from home. Then she started helping him pick out his clothes. We'll need pajamas, your coat. Mom, he said, what are you doing? We'll also need my coat and nightgown. She packed these items into a bag and placed them by the front door. Okay, Justin, are you sure you want to run away from home? Yeah. 
But where are you going? Well, if you're going to run away from home, then I thought I would go with you. Because I would never want you to be left alone at your age. I love you too much, Justin Carl. They held each other while they talked. Why do you want to come with me? Justin asked his mother. She looked into his eyes. Because I love you. I want to make sure you'll be safe. If you do go, I will go with you. Can Daddy come? No. <laughs> Daddy has to stay home with your brothers. He has to work and take care of the house while we're gone. Can the hamster Freddy come? No, Freddy has to stay here too. He thought for a while and said, Mom, can we stay home? <laughs> yes, Justin, we can stay home. Mom? Yes, Justin. I love you. I love you too. How about we make some popcorn together? All right. In this moment, this mother also moved well beyond a natural maternal instinct to love her son into keeping the words of Jesus, extending herself for the sake of her son's spiritual growth showing, by example, the love of a God who never wants us to be alone, who goes with us wherever we go, even if and when we are running away. Even in suffering, even in death. Even when Jesus goes, he says to his disciples, I won't leave you orphaned. I will not leave you feeling abandoned. Neither does he abandon us. He sends us his Holy Spirit, comes to us in the community we experience together, comes to us in bread and wine at his holy table. And he gives us his peace. Thanks be to God.
Holy Trinity, one in essence, undivided. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God. And we ask your blessing on Rob and Melissa Lawrence as they take their marriage vows and form a new family. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for the opportunity to be intentional about discerning your, our next faithful step as a congregation. 
inspire and equip the facilitators and worker bees to engage the process before us. Hear us, O oh God. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks to the Apostle Matthias and all your saints who have gone before, especially our mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, children or grandchildren, or those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O Lord. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift it to the hands of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, 
and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thank 
Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in Washtenaw County. 
Um, I have, there's no commitment if you write your name and email on the list. It's simply that you'll be contacted and uh, know what the options are for donations for that week. So I'm going to have this back by the refreshment table. Thank you, Joyce. Sorry, I forgot to use the mic before. Choir, and all who would like to sing along with the choir, let's gather in the rehearsal room afterwards and rustle up some music for Pentecost.
serve the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.